Hey y'all, Mike here with Ryan Mountain Campy. Okay, so this week's video is going to be a little different. I don't have a lot of footage of the last couple of uh, projects that I've worked on. Um, I, I don't know why, I just didn't set up the camera. I was amazingly taking pictures with the cell phone and didn't really bother setting up the DSLR. So, um, this week, I'll go ahead and go through and uh, just show video of the different pictures, some that I've taken off the blog, some extra ones that I haven't even touched yet. I'll walk you through what I did and just have you a really short video just with a quick update as to where the camper's at so when I get to the next build video you know where I'm at um, and of course if you have any questions feel free to comment down below um, so let's go ahead and get started okay so there's a couple things to note in this picture uh, one I did go ahead and get the uh, framing for the vent finished um, it is toenailed into the spars as well as glued um, and then also in this picture what you note as well is I have all the spars connected via supporting beams or woods or whatever you want to call them supporting spars um, once I've figured out part of what makes the ceiling strong which is the fact that this whole entire thing is a torsion box I realized I had to go ahead and put in those finish putting those support beams in to go ahead and finish up the uh, sealing properly before I can go ahead and actually install the roof into the camper. So this is honestly one of the things that makes this build fun is I actually get to learn a lot of things. Um, so a torsion box essentially is used a lot in carpentry I guess is to make uh, doors, sometimes workbenches, and as long as the support is there, um, a thin layer of plywood on both the top and the bottom with all the support beams in the middle will prevent the whole thing from twisting and becomes very rigid. Before I got started, I was just going to have the support beams, the support spars going from one side of the seat wall to the other with nothing in between, thinking the plywood was going to hold it up. So I'm glad that I joined a Facebook group that talks about these things and I did go ahead and put in these support spars to really prevent, to really give that rigidity that I was looking for. And you'll see later when I put the um, bottom roof in, when I put the roof onto the uh, bottom of this whole structure, it really did change how much the uh, camper was going to be able to move. So with the uh, spars in place, the support for the spars in place, it was time to go ahead and install the ceiling. You can see here, everything ended up being screwed into the ceiling. Reason being is when I tried to do nail. All I had was 18 gauge um, nails for a nail gun and fortunately they just pulled straight through the plywood and didn't help me keep the plywood in place. Um, so we ended up using screws. Um, it's not very sightly but it will all be covered up later. And then do keep in mind that between the uh, plywood and the spars is also a layer of uh, tight bond to help keep that in place. Okay. So while I'm looking at this, um, a few things I've seen some people question before. Um, okay, so first of all, the plywood is 8th inch plywood. Um, it is bent with the grain. Um, so when you look at the, this picture here, you can see the, the grain is running from wall to wall. So it actually, it bends pretty easy. Um, also, in my case here, I just went ahead and used uh, a couple of bar clamps on the outside to hold everything in. And that gave me enough structure to be able to glue this on. Uh, when I do the ceiling, oh, I'm sorry, when I do the roof later, I'll have to probably use tie downs to go ahead and help me um, keep this in place. Something else to note is this hole back here. Um, this is where my main power line as well as all the wires are going to come through. Um, I did go ahead and drill that in as I was um, putting the ceiling in, as that helped me actually clamp this down a bit better um, during the screwing and nailing of the, that ceiling. Less nailing, more screwing. And on the topic of holes, the other thing I did have to go ahead and do was also cut in the uh, hole for the ceiling vent. I just pre-drilled in a couple of holes into each corner, used my um, rotary cutter to cut out that hole, and then used the uh, trim router with a flush bit to go ahead and just make it flush to the frame itself. I did notice here that the uh, panel underneath was a little loose in some spots, so I just filled it with glue, clamped it on, and just waited an hour and everything was tight. 
Yeah, so um, I can tell you here, I had a massive sense of accomplishment. Um, at this point, I had a ceiling in place. I had the holes cut out for the vent and the wires. The only other thing I had to do at this point was put the, um, the front wall panel in. And it looked like a camper. Um, obviously, there's still a lot of other work to be done. But this is one of those things where it just felt like nothing was getting done. But then when all these big pieces went into place, I was just like, holy crap, this is happening. This is awesome. Okay, so accomplishments aside, I did have a dream that the camper was going to fly off the trailer. So I went to Home Depot and picked up a couple lag bolts to go ahead and bolt the walls and the wall frame to the camper floor itself. So after ver verifying the size of the washer, I went ahead and I got a Forstner bit out, just the right size. In hindsight, it probably should have been just a little bit bigger, just to make sure the socket fits as well. Then I used the Forstner bit to go ahead and uh, do a countersink into the frame, and then used a regular drill bit to go ahead and do a pre-drill into the floor of the uh, cabin. At which point I was then able to go ahead and um, bolt in the floor. Now, real quick though, um, it is worth noting that I don't know if this is really going to make a huge difference. I do know the shear strength of screws is not very strong, but there is a ton of screws that go through the frame into the floor. Um, the bolts, the shear strength is a lot stronger, but it is still going through plywood, not necessarily into the steel. So it does make me feel better knowing that the bolts can hold a lot more weight, and uh, we'll just have to hope that my dreams never come true. Okay, so after bolting it down, I went ahead and I got the uh, front wall um, lined up. Now, this one here was a little tricky. Measuring this out was difficult because there's a curve. Um, so what I ended up doing is just getting it close and then uh, just cutting it down until it finally fit. Once it fit, I did go ahead and um, mark out where all the spars were and then took it back to the workbench and just kind of used a uh, paintbrush to go ahead and put paint or not paint but glue into each one of those marks um, that was just easier than trying to mark the other one with it being wood glue I knew it wasn't gonna um, dry super fast either so this worked out pretty well um, and then I just took it back clamped it all on and screwed it in place from the inside with the panel in place, next step was to actually cut out the uh, front window frame. Reason being is this, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have had any clamping points to put on the other panel. Um, so by cutting out that window on this panel, I could clamp the other one in using that window hole, which helped out immensely. Here's the uh, final product of the front uh, walls. You will find here that I did end up having to put another piece of uh, support in just because I didn't pay attention to where the panels overlapped. It's just something to kind of note if you are following along. I hope this helped you guys out. Um, I know this was a little unconventional video. Um, I am pretty much just translated what was in my blog to the pictures and kind of just talked about them. I hoped my tips and stuff helped you guys. If you found value in this video, Please go ahead and like it, um, subscribe to my channel, there will be more videos, and uh, don't forget, we do have a blog on rideamountaincampy.net, as well as our Instagram at rideamountaincampy. Thank you guys for watching, see you next week.